How long does it take for a paradigm to shift? How long for a reframe of an organizational structure, a large scale paradigm? Let's look at cars. Cars was one of the first examples I used with reframing. And the example goes all the way back to 1992. There's a wonderful book called Natural Capitalism, written by Amory and Hunter Lovins and Paul Hawken. And in that book, there's a chapter on the hypercar. Now, the problem with cars is that making cars is not sustainable. At that time, there were about 700 million cars in the world. And now there's about a billion. And the idea was that the number of cars would double. You'd get to one and a half to two billion cars. And if you were going to produce cars the way you produced them in the 1980s, this was going to be unsustainable. It was going to be bad for the environment. Now, what were the reasons for that? Now, the first reason is that cars produce exhaust fumes. They're bad for the environment in the cities. The second reason was that cars run on oil, which is a resource which is finite. The third reason is that cars produce a lot of waste. The car itself gets thrown away after a while when it's no longer being used. And perhaps a fourth reason could be that cars are made of steel. And they showed that because cars are so heavy, because they're made of steel, they need large engines. And actually only 1% of the energy that you put in the car moves the driver. Now, even if you have four people in the car, 4% of the energy that you put in the car moves the four people. And the rest just moves this big hunk of steel. Paul Hawkins said, imagine if an alien came and looked at planet Earth and they saw the best way we'd found to move from one place to another was to take this big rucksack with a ton of steel and to move in a ton of steel every time we wanted to move. Isn't that a crazy solution? So these four elements, exhaust fumes, oil consumption, waste and steel, how could we reframe them? And the hypercar project that came up in natural capitalism was this idea that there would be no exhausts. We would reframe it to clean exhausts, zero emissions, or actually exhausts which purify the city. You could imagine a truck going through the city and because the air that comes out of the truck is cleaner than the air that comes in, these are actually driving filters driving through the city. Instead of the car taking oil, you could make the car electric or based on hydrogen. And then the car would be carbon neutral, would be energy neutral, would be running on solar energy. And you can even imagine the car as a big battery that is a source of energy. Now, in terms of the waste of the car, you could recycle all components of the car. And in fact, in the European Union, that is already happening. More than 95% of the car is recycled. So we've gotten there. And about the last things, a lot of the really modern cars are not made of steel. They're made of strong composite materials, which are still very expensive, but much, much stronger than steel and much lighter. Now, the shift that we've made from 1992 to 2018 in 26 years, we've reframed all these elements. We now have electric cars that are driving around. We have cars that have zero exhaust and that run on solar energy and that are fully recycled and that are not made of steel. So I want to show you that some of these paradigm shifts are possible, even in this structure of this enormous structure of the car companies of the world, and even if we're just starting with electric cars. But interestingly enough, we could reframe it on an even deeper level because there is another set of assumptions that are changing. The set of assumptions that everybody needs a car. I need a car, you need a car, we need two billion cars. What if we just shared the cars? What if nobody owns their own car? That's a silly old idea, ridiculous idea that everybody has to have their own car because cars actually don't move 95% of the time or 99% of the time. So we share cars, we have car sharing schemes. And in that case, we don't have to make so many cars. And of course, the other deep assumption is that cars need drivers. We now have autonomous cars being developed. And in a few years, these cars will be driving around, parking themselves outside of the city. We can get rid of all the parking spaces and liberate a huge amount of space. The roads will be less congested because there'll be fewer cars driving. And in terms of the autonomous cars, we've reframed this. So here, this is a bit of a historical lesson. You have a paradigm, a paradigm and a frame of how to make cars. You shift it to make it more environmentally friendly and healthier for human beings. And then you realize that even while you're making that shift and it takes you a few decades, there is deeper shifts happening at a different level. 
So when you shift your paradigm, when you reframe, you do your reframe and then you think what other frames are there underneath that I'm not seeing. And who knows what the car of the future will look like? Who will be driving it and where it will take us? Thank <laughs> you.